Romy and Michelle's high school reunion is weirdly relevant today for a late 90s movie about a couple of late 80s best friends. Everything's gonna happen for us there, Michelle, and we'll never look back. This comedy about two inseparable women attending their 10th high school reunion wasn't a big hit when it came out in 1997. So what group would you say we were in? Well, we definitely weren't in the A group. But you know what? We weren't really in the B group either. Yet more than 25 years later, it lives on as a beloved comedy classic of its era. And not just because it has some especially quotable lines. You're a bad person with an ugly heart, and we don't give a flying f what you think. Romy and Michelle was at the forefront of the modern female buddy comedy. It also managed to anticipate many of the anxieties about status, self-image, and expressing your true self that drive people in the current age of social media, despite being released at a time when most people were still going on the internet through AOL. Hey, if anybody needs to make a call, I've got a phone. Here's our take on why Romy and Michelle were ahead of their time. On paper, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion should seem incredibly dated, yet the central conflict of the movie feels timelier than ever. Lifelong best friends Romy and Michelle start to feel insecure about the prospect of showing up to their reunion as 28-year-olds without glamorous jobs, husbands, babies, or a lot of money. Married. Nope. Engaged. No. Living with someone. Should I say you? An important aspect of the movie is that, outside of these reunion spurred anxieties, Romy and Michelle are very happy thanks to their friendship, both in high school and as adults. They don't feel dissatisfied or even initially realize that their lives might appear disappointing or embarrassing to others. Now that I'm looking at this, uh huh. Our lives don't seem as impressive as I thought. What makes them feel frustrated and inadequate is only when they begin comparing themselves to the classmates they're going to meet again. And all we really need is maybe some like better jobs and boyfriends, right? If those things were so easy to get, wouldn't we already have them? We never really had a good enough reason like going to a reunion to motivate us. Does this sound familiar? Thanks to the 24-hour reunions many of us have access to on social media, it's possible to compare your lives to the lives of your former classmates or current friends or influencers you've never met constantly. The American Psychological Association mentions how studies link Instagram to issues involving depression, body image, self-esteem, and social anxiety. Romy and Michelle offers this in a microcosm. Well, then what's the point of going if we're not going to to impress people. The best friends conflict with each other, the strange extended dream sequence that precedes their actual reunion, and the lies they attempt to tell about their lives, like that they're the inventors of post-it notes, are all fueled by paranoia that their peers are leading richer, better, cooler lives than they are. We are sophisticated, educated, successful career women. Even though it turns out their mean girl rivals actually aren't at all as happy as they make themselves appear. My priorities have changed since I became a mommy. Instagram is a particularly apt comparison point for Romy and Michelle, because these characters are so fashion-oriented, and because the movie ultimately doesn't condemn the idea of caring about your appearance or curating your personal aesthetic. This is like the cutest we've ever looked. At the reunion, Romy and Michelle wind up ditching their power suits, changing into the outfits they like and that they design themselves, which eventually leads them to becoming successful. In other words, by staying true to that fashion sense. I think you are like the funnest person I know. Me too! With you. As former teenagers of the 80s, the importance of being true to yourself is a lesson Romy and Michelle would have grown up hearing from plenty of movies and TV. But that lesson has important resonance for today's social media dynamics. If you're working to keep up with others and put forth a successful image, being on Instagram or other socials can be exhausting and unsustainable. All I ever wanted was for people to think that we were better than we were in high school. But if you're working on your image or your body or your career out of actual love and enjoyment, that process can be rewarding and empowering, as long as you're doing it for you and not for for the likes. Romy and Michelle is a product of two different and distinct time periods. Its sensibility reflects the 80s in that Romy and Michelle grew up in that time and affect valley girl-like personas that were often portrayed and spoofed in comedies of the era. All the guys in the class were like, terribly disgusting, I'm like, so sure, I'm like, in fact, Romy and Michelle were first created as a part of a 1987 play called Ladies' Room, in which they were broadly drawn supporting characters. Their movie also fits with other movements of the latter half of the 90s, specifically the blonde girls having misadventures teen comedies of that era, like Clueless and Dick. I have got an idea. Let's blow off 7th and 8th, go to the mall, have a calorie fest, and see the new Christian Slater. Yes! Plus the early 2000s likes of Legally Blonde. Thematically, it's a version of the quarter-life crisis narrative pioneered by the graduate in 1967 and often reserved for young men. What are you going to do now? I was going to go upstairs for a minute. Oh, 
I meant with your future. Your life. Case in point, the exact same month that Romeo and Michelle was released in April 1997, the same movie studio put out Gross Point Blank, another comedy about a 10-year high school reunion where the main characters wonder about the life choices that led them from their carefree 80s youth to their 90s adulthood angst. How long has it been? Since you stood me up on prom night and vanished without a word? Yeah. 10 years, I think. Yeah. The two movies were seen by a near identical amount of people during their original runs, but one major difference is that Gross Point Blank centers a male crisis of confidence, while Romy and Michelle offers a more female-centric version, which was a far rarer point of view at that time. And in the long run, this may have made Romy and Michelle more influential than its then popular contemporary male equivalent. We are gonna go back there and blow them away. As it turns out, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion has a lot of descendants, including the female buddy duo. Romy and Michelle helped pave the way for movie centering two funny women, like the Heat or Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. They helped normalize the idea of a duo that could be more like Mary and Rhoda from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, rather than Mary and some guy she's dating. I'm the Mary and you're the Rhoda. There is also the quarter-life crisis narrative. Romy and Michelle's willingness to follow characters who don't find a high school happy ending and flail when they grow into adulthood is a major influence on comedies like Bridesmaids and a Young Adult and TV shows like Girls, Broad City, and Insecure. And of course, the self-image comedy. Since the days of Romy and Michelle, movies have become more aware of how women in particular are expected to put forward a certain image and often want to attain that image in their real lives. Michelle and I did make up some lame story. We only did it because we wanted you to treat us like human beings. Movies like I Feel Pretty, the college reunion comedy Girls Trip, and the family-centric Bad Moms movies address the ways of navigating that minefield of women trying to feel good about themselves and their life choices without necessarily conforming to a picture-perfect, social media-ready version of those choices. I'm so tired of trying to be this perfect mom. The social media comedy Ingrid Goes West goes even further, exploring the lies and self-deception that can get wrapped up in an Instagram obsession. Hanging with Harley Ch at the Little Doe launch party. Sparkle emoji. It's easy to imagine Ingrid, the lonely stalker at the center of the movie, as a version of Romeo or Michelle, who grew up without a best friend, and then used social media in an attempt to fill that void. Wait, actually don't smile, and if you hold your bag down like this, it might look better. And even at an angle, maybe. So Romeo and Michelle has a good message, endearing characters and influence, but there are also three other reasons it's stuck around in culture this long. First, its decade-spanning timeline played a big part. By mixing 80s teen movie touches in its flashbacks and fashion in a 90s setting and more outsider-friendly sensibility, the movie has a doubly nostalgic effect. Come on, Michelle, let's just go dance with ourselves. Also, the movie's comedic nods to trends of the 80s and 90s reassure us that what's considered cool in a particular era tend to be pretty fleeting. So you should pick and choose from whatever styles and eras bring you joy. The idea makes the movie feel timeless. The film has also endured thanks to its emphasis on the bad parts of social status and peer pressure extending into adulthood. The high school reunion is a catalyst for Romeo and Michelle's success, not because they're able to win the acceptance of the A group, but because it reminds them how important their friendship is to each other and reconnect with the sense of fun they had as teenagers. Until you told me that our lives weren't good enough, I thought everything since high school was a blast. They also figure out that almost everyone deals with insecurities about their social status. I really thought you guys had it made in high school. Us? Yes, you with your long hair and your long legs. Lastly, it puts an unexpected face on feminism. Like other blonde girl hijinks comedies of its era like Clueless and Dick, Romeo and Michelle might not have seemed like a feminist statement to audiences at the time, but with its story about female friendship, self-acceptance, and rejecting superficial markers of success, it joins those movies, as well as female bonding comedies like 9 to 5 and First Wives Club, as feminist classics that truly center female stories. Of course, all of those details might not resonate if the movie wasn't also so much fun. On the film's 25th anniversary in 2022, Mira Sorvino summed up the movie's appeal. I think what the world needs now is Romeo and Michelle to cheer them up. The lightness of it, the silliness, but the values of love and being yourself. Have a Romeo and Michelle day! That was a good one. That's The Take. Click here to watch a video we think you'll love, or here to check out a whole playlist of awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.